Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about energy. Hopefully you all have some, enough to pay attention to AP physics today. And the first thing we're gonna talk about is work, because maybe you have some to do later. Maybe you have some to do right now as you review. Word, I started with, started off on a bad foot. It's called work, not word. Um, and it is the energy change in a system. And remember, the equation for work is, uh, sometimes they're gonna show it like this. I believe on the equation sheet, they show it like this, but this means the parallel force to displacement times the displacement, or sometimes it's just written as FD cosine of the angle theta, um, because that essentially takes into account just the part that is uh, parallel. Um, and this is also gonna be equal to the change in energy or the energy moving into or out of the system. Uh, because remember, with energy, uh, systems are super important. At the end of this, I'll probably talk about LOL diagrams um, and, and defining your system because it's, it's, it's crazy important uh, to, to help you make sure that you set things up. So um, let's see here. What else? Let's see here. The, the units for work and for energy. are going to be Newton's times meters, which is equal to a joule. Uh, it's the same for the change in energy. They're gonna have exactly the same units, which are Newton's times meters, which are actually uh, kilograms meters per second squared times meters, which is you know kilograms meters squared over second squared. So if you get some units like that, know that that's equivalent to a joule. All right, so there's something to remind you of called mechanical energy. And that's just gonna be equal to the total kinetic uh, potential energy of a system. where potential energy typically in the forms of gravitational or elastic potential energy. Um, kinetic energy, sometimes called Ke or just capital K, is going to equal one half mv squared. And um, note, because of the squared factor, it can't be negative. Oop, we got one more. Uh, with um, elastic potential energy, Uh, sometimes Mr. Uh, P wrote it as PEE. -E. I like writing it as US, where the U is always potential energy. The S typically stands for spring. And that is one half KX squared, where K is the spring constant. And X is the displacement from resting. Just like a spring, you know, has a certain resting length. Um, however much you move it from its resting length is what that X is gonna be. All right, and this also, 
can't be negative. Um, let's see here. And then we have gravitational. Uh, which is typically, Mr. P called it PEG, I call it UG. Uh, and there are two equations for that. Um, it is going to be MGH, or uh, I believe uh, it's the same thing, but on your, uh, and your equation sheet, it's written as uh, UG equals MG delta Y, but since H is just height and delta Y is just change in the Y direction. They mean exactly the same thing. So this is okay for on earth, which has a constant little g. But the other form, the less happy form is negative G, M1, M2 over R, um, where UG uh, at infinity equals zero. Um, so here, uh, UG can be negative. Remember that. UG can be negative. Um, and this is zero. This is zero uh, at you know the lowest height. This is zero at infinity. And this is true for everywhere in the universe. Um, so if you and if you don't have a constant little g, uh, then you must use this meaner form, not this form. Okay. Um, the other thing is just to mention work can be negative too. Either from an angle calculation or if energy energy is transferred. Out. Of the system. OK, so I'm going to pause here. Um, and see if there are. Any um, questions. Are we going to need to have the gravitational constant memorized? Nope. It's on your uh, your equation sheet. In fact, you will not have to memorize this. You will not have to memorize this. You will not have to memorize, well, this or this. It's all on your sheet. Um, even this is is on, on your equation sheet. You do not need to memorize these things. You just need to know how to use them. OK. Any other questions? And they're not labeled like this as well. So you're not going to see you know, uh, that this is the displacement from resting length, or this is the spring constant. Uh, you will just get the equation in their raw form. That's a good question. Uh, I, there's, you know, some problems that I've seen that are asking about like conservation of energy with regards to closed systems. Yep. Um, like what are the specifics about that? Like how can you tell if there's a system that entirely conserves energy, total mechanical energy? So if so, that's a great question. In fact, that's the next thing that I was going to say. Um, if I was going to say mechanical energy energy is conserved served if no work is done on the system, then you know, MEI equals ME final. And uh, the, the biggest case 
of this as being an, an open system or a closed system where mechanical energy is conserved is if uh, friction will always uh, do work on a system typically. I, I, I'd say this is a fine way to, to talk about it. So if, you, if you've got a system uh, and you don't include uh, the heat uh, and you don't include light or sound, which is you know due to contact or frictional forces, Um, it's going to be, so, so let me reword that. If there's heat, light, or sound, or friction, then it, it's not a closed system. And work will be done. Transferring energy out. Does that make sense? Yeah, and in that case, energy is not concerned. Yep, mechanical yeah. energy is not concerned. In fact, that's a good point. Total energy is conserved, but mechanical being just K plus US plus UG, is not conserved. Does that make sense? Yeah, and then mechanical is in like contrast to like thermodynamic things. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's if there's thermal energy, um, that's going to be uh, heat energy. Okay. Or light or sound, but mostly heat. Does that make I sense? Think, yeah. Yeah, that is the the for me the biggest problem was identifying systems like ball spring earth system versus ball earth like the things that interact and that, just, was, that was one of, gonna be one of the things that i do last here okay, is, uh, right. <laughs> is how to make sure that things are are included in your system so um i think i'll what i'll probably do is just a just an example maybe i'll even do it right here since since we're thinking about it okay so let's talk about a spring with a ball um, starts like this and then ends up like uh, where the spring is completely compressed. Uh, and then um, sometime later, the spring is no longer compressed. And the ball is, let's say it's not quite reached uh, its top height. So V is greater than zero, that should say greater than zero. It has some velocity up here. So what, what to include in the system in order to make sure it's, it's a closed system, essentially, in order to make sure there's no work done on the system. So to make sure that you can store uh, elastic potential energy, you need the spring in your system. In order to make sure you can store gravitational potential energy, you need the earth in your system. In order to make sure that you have kinetic energy, you need the ball in your system. Usually it's the object is gonna be your system. But if we call all of these things in our system, then we can store energy first is gravitational and we can end with, oops, I should say you S. Sorry, it's not clear. We can store it uh, spring, energy or elastic potential energy. And at the end, we can store it gravitationally and kinetically in some amount that we would need more information in order to figure out. But if this is the case, then we don't have work going in and we don't have work going out. So that's the case. If we did not have, you know, let's say we just did earth ball, then 
we would start with no energy. In fact, we can just to make sure that you're that we're clear here. Yeah. Spring gravitational gravitational up here. Um, if this is the case, uh, both of these are included in our system. This is included in our system. Um, and we have all the things in our system. There's no work done on our system. It's closed. If we just have the earth and the ball now, and we don't include the spring, Now, gravity is in our system still, but the spring energy isn't. But because the ball is going to move upwards, the spring is going to be doing positive work. So we're going to have positive work from the spring going into our system. And because we have the ball on the Earth, we can store it at the end as U, G, and K. But instead of having energy stored as spring potential energy, we would have work from uh, the spring force. Does that make sense? If I were you, I would always try to include the spring in your system. It's gonna make your life a whole lot easier. But if they, for some reason, say you don't, um, and when I say spring, I mean spring, bungee cord, something like that. And and if and this is also a, uh, assuming that there's no air resistance. Air resistance equals friction, which will do work and transfer energy out. Any questions on that? Okay. And if there are no questions, I will keep going. Um, let's talk about power. And actually, let me check my chat, see if anybody's been blowing up the chat. It's not look like anybody's been blowing up the chat. So thank you guys for asking questions, but allowed. Okay, so power is rate at which work is done or energy is transferred into transferred into or out of a system. So power is going to be your work over your time uh, or change in energy over your time in the system or FD cosine theta over your time or because displacement over time is velocity, it could be FV cosine theta. And again, if, if this is, if the displacement or the velocity is in the same direction as the force, uh, uh, angle is zero and, you know, cosine of zero equals one. So it becomes just FB. Okay. Uh, the units for power are gonna be equal to watts, um, which are equal to a joule over a second or big capital W, 
Um, and something just worth noting is uh, 746 watts equals one horsepower. Okay. Any questions on power? So I see when you eliminated cosine zero, you get F and V. Um, I know that there might be some problems. Do you think they'd be they'd ask sort of um, force and velocity as vectors, and they'd ask you to dot them as like a dot product of those two for APC? Um, yeah. possibly. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you've seen any, but sure, it's it's a definite possibility that you could. But yeah, right. for for algebra one, we just have to worry about this. But no, you're you're right. I think that's uh, um, that's certainly a possibility. Thanks. You're welcome. Good question. Okay. And then finally, are there any other questions? I should say. Let me let me check on that. Uh, Pranav, but I believe that's that's the case. I mean, it's I'll just check. looking at the definition now. It's not that's something I'm worried about. It's just something that maybe they might. No, no, no. I, I I think it's worth uh, thinking about. Or power. Yep, it's worth uh, looking at. All right. Um, the last thing we're going to talk about, and it's related to. Um, it's related to energy, but it's not directly energy, but most people cover it uh, at the end of energy is Hooke's law, which is just a fancy name for spring force equals K times X. Um, so this is spring force and it's written like, Uh, where this is again, spring constant. And this is displacement from resting length. But it's, it's oftentimes written like this, um, uh, just because uh, the, it's, it's, it's going to be opposite. So springs always, if I pull a spring this way, it's been displaced this way, but the force opposes it. And if I push a spring, um, that means it is going to push back. So again, I've displaced it this way, but the force is that way. So uh, typically, the magnitude is going to be equal to the spring constant times the resting length, but the sine of it depends on uh, sine depends on what you set as positive. So if I if I am if I've got a spring and I'm calling to the right positive uh, and I push this way, uh, then the force is pushing back this way. If I call to the right positive and I pull this way, the force is pulling uh, me this way. So it'll be a negative. Okay. And typically because uh, the displacement or um, because as you increase the displacement, you get a larger force. If you graph a um, spring force versus displacement, you're gonna get a line where the slope equals fx over x, which is gonna be equal to your spring constant. Um, and also it's, it's important to notice um, the last thing is that for a non-constant force, uh, and this is just the type of displacement, right? So for a non-constant force like this, then, 
the area on an F versus D graph equals work. And you could have work due to the spring if you stretch it, uh, you know, a certain space and it would be the area. So it'd be one half um, the base X times the height FS, which equals one half X times KX, which equals one half KX squared, which is our equation for US, where it comes from. All right, and then spring constant units are gonna be Newtons divided by meters, Fs over S. Um, so that's just what they're gonna be. So I have talked for almost exactly a half an hour. Do we have any other questions before we get practicing? Sorry, I know I'm asking kind of a lot, but just it's looking right. at the, um, the definition, what if the graph sort of goes under the x-axis? Would you account for that with negative area or would it just be like the magnitude of work is the total area? Oh no, absolutely. If it went down here and there were a negative area, yeah, that would be negative work. It would, instead of a positive force, now we have a negative force uh, suggesting it is opposing the displacement. So yes, this would be negative area equals negative work. And again, for you, you know, work is mm -hmm. just that. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other questions? Okay, party people, I'm gonna stop recording.